Hello, my friends. It's Brian with BG Model Workshop, and we're back again with an update on a special project that we're working on for my uncle. Uh, he asked us if we had a Ford GT40 in our stash, and we surely did, this particular one in, indeed. Um, we sent him some photos of the box art. He did like the uh, color scheme and decal, so we're going to go with this one. Um, now, it uh, does say it's a Revell kit, and uh, that's actually kind of a misnomer, because it is not technically a, a, a Revell kit. It was imported by Revell from our friends at Fujimi. We did, uh, the box doesn't say anything about uh, being made by Fujimi. All it does say is that it's made in Japan. And the instructions, uh, thus... Uh, do say Ravel all over it, and we get uh, an actual copyright date of 1989. So uh, this is a little bit of a, a um, little bit of a vintage kit. So that's kind of fun. Um, but even though it is a vintage kit, it's actually going together quite nicely. Uh, the plastic is nice. There are some of the trees did have a little bit of a bow to them. You see that there, and that was a problem that we had with the with the uh, lower pan for the chassis. <clears throat> Excuse me, but um, it was all fix upable, so we didn't have to worry about that too much at all. Uh, the thing that gave us the clue was a uh, an eagle-eyed uh, member of our model club um, happened to notice um, on the photo etch fret, Fujimi. There we go, right there. So a little bit of research uh, discovered that uh, there are Fujimi kits out there that are boxed exactly the same size box and everything because this is kind of an odd size for a Ravel box. Even, even if it was a Ravel Germany, it's a different size. It reminded me more of something we would have gotten for Hesegawa or maybe even Tamiya. But um, yeah, uh, we discovered that it's actually a, a Fujimi kit. There are Fujimi kits and Ravel kits out there still available on the Ebays. Uh, kind of noticing that the Ravel kits are going for a little bit less than the uh, Fujimi kits. So if you want a really nice Ford GT40 curbside kit, grab one of the Ravel ones. Um, they're still available out there, uh, especially it's particularly this car. It seems like this is a popular one. And uh, also the uh, GT40 number 98, I believe, is uh, is re readily available still as well. Uh, whether or not they're still in print, I don't know. I just know that, they, uh, that they're out there still. But, uh, uh, yeah, so we're doing this for my Uncle Dennis. We actually had to speed up the, um, the timeline on this because our travel plans for California got flip-flopped. And now we're going out like about uh, four months earlier, and we have just... 50 days, counting today, 50 days to get this done and packaged up and put in the car to go to California. So we're going to um, pull out all the stops. And uh, if you guys know what that term means, then you're pretty damned, arso you're pretty damned awesome. But uh, we're going to pull out all the stops and we're going to uh, do our bestest on this job to get it done on time to uh, hit the road. So uh, let's just show you the... Um, the speed bump that we developed in the building process. The only thing that's gone wrong so far uh, was one of the lower A arms on the rear suspension really gave us a kick in the fiddly bits. Um, where are you? Where are you? Here you are. This lower A arm right here. We're going to call him punk ass. This punk ass uh, lower A arm decided it didn't want to stay attached to the actual chassis anymore, so it came off. Uh, magic words were said. And um, after cooling down and taking a taking a walk around the block and having some eggnog and uh, some adult eggnog, um, decided that what we'll try to do is just glue it back in place. And uh, the the shock mount here, it actually attaches to the top of that a arm, and uh, that's going to actually helps us out with our geometry for the suspension in the back. So. Once we figured out that that was going to be good and help us out, uh, we were a little more comfortable about um, trying to cement this back into place again since we're going to have multi-point attachments here. Uh, unfortunately, this control rod, let's see if we can get, there we go, this control rod right here, it's a floater that doesn't go to anything because it is a curbside, there is no engine here, uh, just a nice big sandbox for BG to play in. But... Um, 
we're going to, you know, I was thinking about stacking up some styrene in there, but how do we know how high it's supposed to be and all that kind of uh, fighting and fretting. So uh, once we discovered that that shock mount was going to help out with our geometry, we just went ahead and cemented it back into place. So that brings us to why you might be asking yourselves, Brian, why did you build the whole entire chassis before you painted anything? Well, I'll tell you. Gather around, folks, and I'll tell you a story. Uh, we decided that uh, building the rest of the chassis would be a good idea because of this uh, punk ass bit right here. Um, we figured that if we did the entire chassis and then uh, tested our height, our road height, uh, mounting the front and rear wheels and then making sure that everybody was nice and level square, plum and true, um, that we would be happy. And then we could move on to paint, final assembly and all the other pretty stuff. So uh, that consisted of having to attach... Um, let's see if we can get a good shot of it here. This piece here is one solid lump of styrene and that has the uh, shock towers actually mounted to it. And then these forward facing braces attached to the um, upper part of the um, interior bucket. I said bucket. And uh, so that led us to having to put the interior bucket in, and then we had to put on the uh, front suspension because, of course, how can you check if you're if you're level and true if you don't have all four wheels on the ground? Because that's the goal, is to have all four wheels on the ground. So uh, that also led to having to put on this truss piece back here with these bracing pieces that go forward up into that main bit right there. So. Um, I don't know much about GT40s, but if this model is true to the to the actual car at all, this piece right here is the key piece to the entire car. If this piece is messed up at all, everything fore and aft is going to be buggered up. So uh, we decided that we needed to add these this piece on the back here because it is molded to the cross brace. Um, and that let us know that we do have a little bit of a sag on the back side here, but it's fix upable because we can uh, actually clamp this. Uh, there's a little bit of movement there. We can clamp that into place and cement that as we wish. So, um, so yeah, we're going to get all done with this and we're probably going to base it all in flat black and then go back and pick it out with metalizers and such and make it all nice and pretty and happy. And uh, we'll be moving on from there. So after uh, we get the wheels and tires on here, everybody's nice and trued up and cemented back together again. We're going to go into the uh, into the wash tub and get all the fingerprints off. So that's what we got going on there. That's about um, two days worth of uh, sweating. Uh, the kit is very very nice. Uh, as I said before, the uh, this is the only bright work that's in the kit, and it's got that really awesome satin finish that only our friends from the Japan area can can come up with. Um, I do like that. I don't like the fa I don't like uh, high polished chrome bits because it does make the the kit look a little too toyish. And the color we've chosen that closely resembles the box art is Velocity Blue SP one twenty three from our friends at Splash Paints. And uh, we'll let you know how that goes, of course. Uh, we'll probably be basing the car with a white primer so that we can get uh, the, uh, the brightest uh, of the dark color out as possible, if that makes any sense at all. All right, I'd like to say hi to our new subscribers. Thank you guys for joining. I appreciate that greatly. Welcome. And uh, if you like what you see, give us a comment down below. If you don't like what you see, then don't worry about it. All right, guys, everybody have a great Tuesday. We'll talk to you a little bit later. I'm going to go off and have lunch with my brother. And we'll talk to you later. Bye now.